Here is another video in our series on building a duplex apartment. And in this video, I will be going over the roof framing, starting with the reduced height of the top plate. We're going to use a one by, and for our two by four walls, this will be a one by four. And this will be to allow the roof trusses to settle down a little bit. This might or might not be a requirement by the roof truss manufacturer in your area. So I would suggest to contact them to validate that information along with all of the other information in this video. So here we have a couple of gable end roof trusses along with some regular trusses that will start from this end and go two foot on center. We are also going to have a gable roof truss to create a firewall here. I will go over the information about the firewall in another video. So 24 inch on center roof trusses along with shaped blocks. However, your project might allow you to use different types of blocks or specific hardware that might be required to attach the blocks to the framing plates and the trusses. So not too difficult. Follow the installation instructions provided by the roof truss manufacturer and you shouldn't have any problems. Our gable end roof truss with 16 inch on center gable studs. And if you notice the exterior walls where the roof trusses are sitting on or the gable truss is sitting on top of, we'll be using a two by four top plate, not a one by four. However, the center wall here dividing up the two garages will be using one by fours. And this is actually a question that was raised on a couple of my videos because some viewers suggested that they've never installed a 1x4 on the interior partition walls. However, this is the only way I've ever done it. I've never seen it done any other way. We will also have another firewall here. We're going to have a firewall down the entire length of the walls that's going to be dividing the two units along with a firewall here. And I'm going to need to do a little more research to figure out how the California fill area firewall might need to be installed. And of course, our drywall backing and shaped blocks. The shaped blocks will run the entire length of this wall here so that we can get some perimeter nailing for our plywood. Next up, let's go ahead and take a tour of the ceiling backing. And the backing will usually attach to the roof trusses so that it will float with the roof trusses. The idea behind this is that as you apply weight to the top of the roof, for example, when adding the shingles or roof tile, this is going to cause the roof trusses to settle a little bit or move down. And with that, you will want the ceiling backing to move down also. So in other words, you're not going to want to drywall the interior without the roof being loaded or finished. And some of the backing will be able to install directly to the truss, one side of the truss, or hang from the blocks. And of course, the gap between the bottom of the truss and the top of the framing plates that might be required for your project. And with this gap, you're going to need to install some type of a connector to connect the roof trusses to the framing plates and allow them to move up and down until the building is loaded. So you will need one of these connectors on every truss over every interior wall, along with an access opening into the attic. And even though I didn't put them in the bedrooms, you might need a board here at a specific span length or width to prevent the bottom of the trusses from moving. And that board will simply nail from the top into the trusses or bottom cords. And even though this is going to be a full height wall, you might need to use some type of building hardware to connect the wall to the trusses like we have here. And they might need to be spaced about 32 inches on center. And that will apply to this side. Over here, we're going to have the gable roof truss. And we can probably get away with just connecting the two by four to the truss that we're going to install on this side or this unit over here. And I do have other videos if you're looking for more information about truss backing, ridge blocks, and even building houses with engineered roof trusses. 
You will also need some type of a board here to connect the brake for the roof sheathing to. This would be a false valley extension and can be installed a few different ways. Let's go ahead and install our fascia board. Take a look at how the fascia board is going to be a little lower in the front here so that the plywood will come down and connect to the front of it. And you might even think about shaping the top of the fascia board so that it is angled and the plywood sheathing will connect to it a little better. We will also be installing our lookouts along with another block that will look like the ridge is continuing through. Even though this block right here will provide us with absolutely no structural support. And you might need to install a couple of braces to provide you with a little more lateral structural support. These braces, if installed correctly, will prevent the roof from moving side to side. And don't forget to check with the roof truss manufacturer for more information about structural support bracing. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the fascia board that's running through the back of the building. Now, even though I didn't go over the garage roof truss installation, it will be the same as this. 24 inches on center with the same type of blocking over the walls and for the ridge. Next up, let's go ahead and remove a couple of trusses so we can take a look at the firewall. Firewall will have Type X 5H drywall installed going from the top of the floor all the way to the bottom of the roof sheathing. And again, I will be providing another video on that in the future along with how this firewall here will be drywalled. And believe it or not, we're going to need to install these boxes in here. And you'll need to check with your engineer to figure out whether or not these boxes will need to be attached to the floating roof trusses or whether or not they could be attached to the wall framing. And again, to create a firewall, the drywall will need to go all the way from the bottom of the foundation to the top of the roof sheathing. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, these firewalls also won't allow your neighbor to access your attic, which can be a big problem in older apartment complexes that don't have firewalls. And you can see here where they are not attached to the wall framing plate. And again, building hardware will need to be used to attach the roof truss to the framing plates in the same way that I showed you previously in the video. And yes, this is a lot of work to do something like this, but it would all be worth it if there was ever a fire. The last thing you want to do is have a fire start in your neighbor's apartment and burn all of your possessions. So yes, you can thank the fire department and the building department for this. Next up, let's go ahead and install the roof sheathing on this one side so that we can install all of our fill. And I do have other videos on how to build this particular section here. Simply head over to the website and go to the roof framing area and look for the words roof framing fill or California roof framing in one of the videos. So again, I don't know if this needs to be a firewall here, if I need to have a division here. And feel free to chime in, anyone watching this video, and let me know what your opinions are on finishing the firewall in the fill area. And again, the reason why we installed the valley block here so that we could nail both sides of the roof sheathing to it. And you can see here where all of this is dying into the top of the roof framing to create a nice flat surface there. So everything is nice and tight. All your cuts are at the right angles and spaced correctly for the sheathing. Next up, let's go ahead and install the rest of the sheathing. Go ahead and zoom in down here where the plywood is going to be breaking on top of our valley block or false valley rafter and then jogging over a little bit. This offset here is to allow the plywood on this side to sit on top of the plywood sheathing on this side. And then of course it can be nailed into our sleepers or the boards that the bottom of the rafters will be sitting on top of. And last on the list, let's go ahead and take a look at some ventilation here. We might need to cut some holes and install some roof dormer vents. If you notice, we did not install any vents under the roof eaves. And since we are going to be sealing off some of these areas, the firewall here, the firewall here, and the firewall over here, will require us to cross ventilate a different way. 
we can install a vent over here and a vent over here to ventilate this section right here or the roof fill area and then either one or more on each side to cross ventilate this area over here. This truss is going to be sealed off with drywall to prevent air from going from the garage into this attic here or this fill area. And even though I don't provide a lot of information for ventilation in my videos, you don't have to be an extremely intelligent person to figure out that any areas that are going to be blocked off from other sections will need their own ventilation and in some cases their own cross ventilation. And as always, any questions you have about this design, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. 